What of the minor league scene? With online streaming services covering the AHL, ECHL, SPHL, and most colleges and junior leagues, you have to pay to watch anything that's not the NHL. Well, the FPHL may just be the answer. The Fed streams their games right on YouTube. You can't beat that. It's free hockey for you. It's minor league hockey. How much animosity can there really be? Thompson pummeling a man as Henry Till just got run. With a left and a left and a left and a left. And now the rest of the Thunderbirds are in there. And this could get Pavlov kicked out of the game. Charging at him like a bull and driving him into the boards. Somebody needs to rip his mask off. Make the horn and recommend teams based on the three most important pillars of hockey. Overall aesthetic, entertainment value, and how many hat tricks have been loaned to the team. The Carolina Thunderbirds won the 2019 Commissioner's Cup, which still technically makes them reigning champs. Did you know that they won the 2019 Commissioner's Cup? They only remind you every other waking moment of their day. They talk about their championship more than we talk about our appearance on John Oliver. Which is to say they run that topic into the ground. The Thunderbirds like to present a polished, all we do is win aura, and for good reason. They've won 75% of their games as a franchise and boast one of the deepest rosters in the league with stars like Jan Salak, Peter Panacic, and John Butita. Throw in the recent acquisition of Danville's leading scorer Fred Hine and mentors goaltender Austin Rudabush, and that is a really well-rounded team. They play a European-style possession game based on speed and skill, and few teams in this league have found an answer for it. But underneath this organizational facade is one of the funniest teams in the FPHF. They were involved in not one, but two bench-clearing brawls last season, one caused by an opposing player firing a slapper into the bench. Now he's gonna get jumped! Michael Bunn is delivering the pain! Perhaps the most intriguing figure of this bunch is none other than their head coach, Andre Nitsch. A former Fed player himself, Nitsch is exactly the kind of bombastic, polarizing leader this kind of season needs. He'll be missing the first eight games of this season from a suspension carried over from last season when he got his shirt ripped off fighting an opposing player, which led to an out-and-out -out melee. The best part? The promotion at Carolina's arena was faith and family night. Utter brilliance that you couldn't possibly script. No, 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 correction. The really best part is that it's not even the first time a coach has gone tarps off for the boys in a Fed League Donnybrook. God, I love this league. Nitsch is known for having a short temper. Give him a tr gold. Nitsch told the Winston-Salem Journal that he'd resign if Carolina's Facebook commenters didn't get off his back after a three-game sweep in Danbury. When his team dropped a close 3-2 game to rival Columbus, Clearly, I'm a bad coach trying to destroy this team. They have two hat tricks on the team in Zach White and Zachary Quinn. The T-Birds are going to have a tough time playing all their games on the road this season, but if you're a fan of clinical, fast-paced hockey and you want to brag about rings like your Shaquille O'Neal, this team is for you. World's most shirtless coach. The River Dragons were far and away the most penalized team in the league last season, averaging 26 penalty minutes a game. Yes, they have scorers like Ivan Bondarenko and Jay Krupp, but Columbus fans are more looking forward to heavy hitters like Seth Ensor and Preston Kugler joining the lineup. Brody Duncan, the dude who shot the puck right into the Carolina bench while on Mentor? Yeah, he's a River Dragon now. MJ Graham, who left the penalty box to join the melee? He's back. This team may lack the raw scoring talent Carolina or Elmira has this season, but there's going to be no shortage of fights to go around. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if their entire roster was constructed just to spite Carolina. And that's what makes Columbus so fun. The spite. There are a lot of former Thunderbirds in that organization. The captain, the owner, the gosh dang broadcaster. At least their jersey set is the best in the league, so... That's something. The Elmira Enforcers are one of the most fascinating brands I've ever seen in minor league hockey. They are fiercely loved by the local community and are a strong hockey team. They're also the most universally reviled team in the league by every other- Every league needs an Elmira Enforcers. Their player head coach is the league's all-time leading scorer, Ahmed Mafuz. He's been in the league since day one, winning three titles and amassing 838 points in 400 games. He's an incredibly talented player with game-breaking ability, and you just want to smack him in his smug little face. Actually, I shouldn't joke about that because Mafuz was allegedly sucker-punched in the locker room hallway before their season opener two weeks ago by two opposing players, leading to a cancellation of the game and the Watertown Wolves pulling out of their season. Minutes before game time. No one is safe from Elmira's rage. Not officials, not fans. They are a team of Mike Milberry's waiting to leap over the boards and beat you with a shoe. And that isn't much of an exaggeration. Which kind of makes them the ultimate minor league hockey circus act. You can't look away. It's brilliant. 
A lot of that toughness emanates from the top and owner slash literal mascot, Robbie Nichols, a former Philadelphia Flyers draft pick who amassed 2,100 penalty minutes in his pro career. Are you serious? <laughs> Andy played a game last year at 55. Andy got a roughing penalty. Oh my god. <laughs> See, Mario Lemieux was a player owner, but was he a player owner and GM like Robbie Nichols? <laughs> Take that, Mario. What a legend. Oh my god. Fans around the league love to point and laugh when things don't go the enforcer's way. Like when their comment section blames the officials after every loss, or when their Thanksgiving game last year was delayed because a turkey took a dump at center ice, or when they held a guaranteed win night promotion against the 0-30 Battle Creek Rumble Bees and lost. That was their only win. The Bees finished 145-3, the worst team in pro hockey history. It's schadenfreude at its finest. But if you enjoy Elmira's misfortunes, this won't be a good season for you. Elmira boasts the best top line in the league with Mafuz, three-time 50-gold scorer Tyler Jurich, and Stepan Timofeyev. And in case that wasn't enough, they rented Danbury's entire top line of Carter Shinkarik, Brett Gravel, and Johnny Ruiz, as well as their top defender in Kyle Gonzalez and starting goaltender Dylan Kelly. They are ludicrously stacked. So lean into that marketing, Elmira. Embrace the bad boys of the FPHL moniker like the Danbury Trashers of old did. They're the Broad Street bullies of the Fed. They hate you as much as you hate them. So if you appreciate villainy and want to stir the pot a bit, this team is for you. Hey, here's the thing about the Port Huron Prowlers. Their opening weekend was a disaster, losing 10-0 and 6-1 to Elmira. That's because it was the first time they took the ice together as a team all year. Players had barely a week to get ready. This isn't some pickup roller hockey league at your local park. What did you think was going to happen? Even when they do eventually get to full strength, they're definitely the weakest roster of the bunch. In a normal season, it would be fine to be so top-heavy, but when everyone else is signing SPHL and ECHL guys without a job and you're standing pat, you're going to be left behind. Dalton Jay is a great veteran goal scorer. Matt Graham is a good playmaker. Austin Federley and Brandon Portillo are solid role players. The legendary Nick Niedert is part of their goaltending tandem, playing for his incredible 30th pro team in his 17-year pro career. So that's awesome. And they have two rentals from Danbury in the form of the Leonard brothers, Sean and Steven. Two fiery grinders unafraid of mixing it up. But beyond that, there's just not much meat to this roster. They're built an awful lot like the Buffalo Sabres, far too reliant on the big guns up front and not enough depth to be a true cup contender. No, the Prowlers are more for fans of the absurd, namely in the promotions department. Their player head coach Joe Pace is a charismatic spokesperson for the team and the league. They signed their broadcaster to serve as backup goaltender last season and he called the game from the bench. But the star of the show is none other than this guy. The Disco Cowboy, a self-proclaimed dancer-slash-motivational speaker that I guess is some kind of superfan or team spokesman? Whatever he is, he's maybe my favorite person in this entire league. He has a bit, and he sells it. He commits. I'll tell you what, Danbury fans! Joe Pace is coming for you! Are you ready? Here comes Joe Pace, and Joe Pace got a posse, that's right. All right? This is Chris Janicek, who played 16 games for the D3 University of Scranton in 2000. And I guess after hyping up the Port Huron Prowlers for so long, they actually signed him to a contract. There he is, as a starter, with Disco Cowboy on his jersey. In a game the Prowlers won 9-2. He was a plus one. He's on Cameo, and guys, I can't recommend him enough. Who wouldn't want this in their life? Honestly, I want his jersey. So while the Prowlers may not be good, you can guarantee that something crazy will happen along the way that will make them worth watching. For pure entertainment though, from a minor league hockey shenanigans standpoint, it's hard not to put Carolina and Columbus at the top. Those games are sure to be a bloodbath. Get your popcorn ready.